Welcome to the Digital Marketing Insights Podcast, brought to you by Brightside Digital. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm delighted to say we have Harry, who's one of the owners at Kilkenny Architecture Salvage Yard. How are you doing, Harry? Hi, Tom. How are you? Thanks for having me on. Man, it was an absolute pleasure. And yeah, thank you for, for even asking to come on. Um, Harry, first of all, can you tell everyone a little bit about yourself and, and what you guys do? Yeah, so our, our company is Kilkenny Architectural Salvage. And yeah, we're one of the largest salvage yards in Ireland. And basically, we've been operating. We actually just celebrated 25 years in business uh, two or three weeks ago. So uh, a big milestone for any business to hit. But uh, yeah, basically, my dad set up the business 25 years ago and has been running it himself and my mom, Mairead. And basically, in the last four years, myself and my two brothers, Paul and Connor, we all we're doing different things for kind of the last 10 years and left our jobs and made the move back down to, uh, to Kilkenny to, to join the yard. And, you know, we were all doing completely random things. I was working in finance as a stockbroker. My brother, Paul was a travel agent. Connor was in insurance. So we all did a bit of a a U turn out of that to come back and, uh, back home, as they say, to, to join the family business. But yeah, as a, as a salvage yard for anyone who doesn't know, because there's lots of people who might not necessarily know what an architectural salvage yard is, is, we sell everything from timber flooring, timber beams, uh, cast iron bats, garden furniture, building materials, like you name it, we have it type of thing. It's kind of place you walk in and you're looking for one thing and you end up leaving with something completely different because you just didn't expect to see it. And, you know, we kind of try to keep our, the, the whole premises and walking around and the this just an exciting place really you know because it's you just never know what you're going to see definitely and would it be fair to say how are you doing more of the digital side of things are you maintaining the website and that side of things a lot of the time yeah that's that's something that i kind of jumped on kind of nearly straight away when i was when i made the move back if you know if you look four years ago we we barely had a functioning website you know it was very much a brochure website it was just a there was a few photos been thrown up um you know salvage yards are very traditional businesses you know dad ran it is very much a place people come down walk around um and when we started looking at it we kind of were thinking about the opportunities that were there you know the world has moved on and obviously we were lucky we were ahead of covid in terms of people not even been able to travel but yeah we started to ramp up on the digital side get a proper website going um doing an e-commerce website's not so easy in our industry given the just the, the volume of stock that we have coming in and out, but most pieces been one offs, you know, so it sometimes it can be a lot of work and effort to photograph an item dimensions, write up a little piece, put it on the website, and it might not even sell from the website it sells in the yard the next day, you know, so look, it's a good result, yeah. but it can be a bit disheartening when you're doing the website side of things. Um, but the biggest thing that we really myself and my brothers tried to bring to the table was social media. And um, we really went hard on that from a complete no, none of us had any background at all, um, apart from having your own Facebook page as you were growing up and whatever else, but set that up. And within four years, we're up to nearly 60,000 followers now um, without spending one euro on advertising um, to get there. We've just done that completely organically. Uh, you know, it's something we're, we're quite proud of. Um, and it's for a small business, it's it's kind of, it's it makes a big difference, you know, to have that many eyeballs looking at us every day. It's It's huge. Yeah, and so you've you've tackled so many big things there. So I'll try and break them down a little bit, Harry. But first and foremost, your website. Um, I, I'm actually I was massively impressed by the amount of imagery and stock you have on the website because I knew straight away there's so many items you'll sell. You'll never get another one of them. They're all yeah. one-offs. There's so many of them. Um, so my first question around that is, how do you identify what to put up and what to leave on the yard? Because I'm sure there's a process there of what you think is worth putting up and going the extra yard with it. Yeah, like it's to be honest, a lot of it just comes down to time and and finding the space for for items. It, it depends what it is. Like you know, I'm I'm thinking about even today we're doing a couple of big jobs at the moment, and there's a lot of bigger pieces of furniture coming in. And like any business, 
space is everything. You only have so much warehouse space. So you're always thinking, what do we want to try and move on quickly? Um, or what are we happy to have kind of as feature pieces in the in the warehouse that kind of get the, where, the wow factor when someone walks in? Um, so there'll definitely be stuff that comes in and we're like, no, we need to move this quick. So it's a priority get it into the photographing area, get it photographed, get it up onto the website because yeah, we are thankfully a busy business that people are coming down to see us. But you put something up on Instagram where we have, you know, between on Instagram alone, we have about 40,000 followers. You know, it's a lot of people who are going to see an item and, you know, we're not really the type of business that are like, we need to go viral to sell hundreds and thousands of a single item. I just need one person to see that piece and go, that's what I've been looking for. And they're sitting there yeah. scrolling, having their lunch, having a cup of tea, and they go, that's what I want. And they either buy it on the website or pick up the phone and do it with us that way. So it's it's a mix really, but then we're also trying to keep that eclectic mix right as well. You know, I could bring in 10 cast iron benches. I'm, I'm not going to put up 10 benches on the website all back to back. You know, we want to give that feel on the website as what you get when you walk around the yard where it's just a little bit of everything. And it's also that kind of enticement to kind of go, yeah, jump in the car, drive down to us because there might be, I don't know what we have on the website. There's probably about 2000 items up on the website page. There's multiples and multiples of that in the warehouse. So it's, it's kind yeah. of, it looks like a lot, but it is still only a snap, a snap view of what we actually well, have. You can tell by the pictures of the yard itself that yeah. it's still only a snapshot, but is that another thing that you focus on digitally is, is footfall and how do you go about driving footfall to the, to the, like, how do you drive them to, to the yard? Yeah. So I think, uh, again, I think it would be mostly through the social media side of things and being really consistent. Um, and like, that's something that I think we'd probably be most proud of, I think, from what we're doing as a small business where, uh, like, you'll know yourself, you know, when you run your own business, you, are kind of a jack of all trades and you're doing a bit of everything and it's you know i take care of kind of the social media stuff and the website but i'm also say doing the accounts or you're dealing with people on the floor and it's the same with the other lads my brothers who are doing other stuff we're all doing a bit of everything so it's not a case of one person has that job just focus on social media or the website all day and that's all you think about it it's part of what we do but it's a big part of what we do we know the importance but i think by being consistent we're always in kind of people's mindset you know at the end of the day that's the beauty of social media even if you're only scrolling and you see a picture we put up you've thought about kilkenny architectural salvage for five seconds that day you know so the brand awareness is huge and we are the type of place that you know there's a bit of excitement for people to jump in the car and come down and have a look it's not like just going to everyone's into different things but you know if you were going to buy a new bath you know it's not in, in a bath store it's not exactly the most exciting thing you're going to be doing more often than not it's seen as a chore um yeah. where people are sitting there and it kind of is definitely a conversation i think people have on a friday evening having a cup of tea and going god we have nothing on tomorrow let's look let's let's jump in the car and go down to kilkenny salvage we've been watching them on social media for two years and talking about it let's go um, yeah. So I think I think us being consistent is the is the important bit there because you're just always in people's everybody's mind's eye basically and, yeah. just, and just trying to stay in front of them because it's competitive as yeah. well you have to other someone else will be there otherwise yeah you can spot on and is there any campaign work that's really helped you with this is there anything that you've done that you're really proud of socially uh, well like as I mentioned earlier about being consistent that's definitely the one thing we try to do uh, but we're trying to have a little bit more fun with it now as well over the last year or so when you kind of you get a bit more comfortable by kind of putting your face on screen and doing all those type of things and maybe TikTok is for whatever some people give out about it but it's also probably given a lot of small business owners the kick to kind of go turn the camera around and put your face on it just don't just take pictures of your items um and so we're trying to have a bit of fun with doing different things we do i'm not sure if you've seen it on any of our pages we've done a couple of them what's called searching for salvage where basically i go and maybe middle of the week i'll announce that i'm going to be in dublin on saturday and it's a secret location i'll go live on instagram and tiktok and i'll say i'm going to be going live at say two o'clock and uh, the first person to come and find me and shout out searching for salvage wins a hundred euro voucher. Um, and, you know, it's having a bit of fun with that. We saw the idea from somebody who was doing it over in the UK on TikTok uh, for a watch business. And he was, you know, he has millions of viewers. He's built it up hugely. But we just said, look, let's let's go for this and have a bit of fun with it. And I kind of said it to my two brothers. I was going to go up to Dublin the first one we did. And they were like, 
you're going to be standing on your own talking to Instagram and TikTok live for an hour and no one's going to come near you. We were found in seven yeah. minutes. Um, really? Yeah, and then we did a Galway one. Now, Galway took 57 minutes. So I was walking around Air Square for nearly an hour uh, and I was about to call it quits two or three minutes later and we were found. And then we recently just did a Kilkenny one as part of our 25 years in business celebrations. And um, ironically, somebody from West Cork found me in six minutes in uh, in Kilkenny. So, you know, people are getting a bit of a, a bit of a buzz out of it. It's a bit of fun and it, it keeps it interesting for us. So that's generated a good bit of, you know, positive news flow and kind of people sharing it and kind of going, look what these guys are doing. They're doing something a little bit different and putting themselves out there because that's, as a small business, you have to, you really have to kind of just get out there and make noise and bang the drum because you don't have the budget to just spend hundreds and hundreds of thousands of euros on Google advertising and Instagram advertising. So you have to do it in creative ways. Exactly. And social media is perfect for the nature of your business in a lot of ways, because I don't think Google ads, you could go top level and stuff, but you're never really going to be able to create unique ads for the unique items and stuff. It's, it would just get so messy and complicated. Yeah, it would. Do a bigger thing. Yeah, it definitely would. And as well, it depends on the type of items you're doing. You know, if okay, if you have a big budget item, which we do, like we have again the beauty of our place is you, we, we cater to everybody from who wants to come in and spend three euros on a little trinket that they pick up off the shelf that just reminds them of something all the way up to somebody who spends tens of thousands of euros um but yeah like look we use google ads we do quite a bit on it and it's something that we're, we're working on getting better at but we've very much taken the view if we can if i can spend time on social media and it's not costing me euros it's costing me hours but at the same time that's as a small business, every euro counts. So um, that's where we kind of really put that put that focus. Yeah, brilliant. And obviously, to focus on, I suppose your day to day a little bit more. Is there any softwares or anything you use regularly that you're you know delighted with? Yeah, um, to be honest, I really have tried to just keep it as simple as possible, um, and I, I think that's whether I'm right or wrong on that. I don't know, but I, I think you can get bogged down in you know, heavy duty editing and going over and over and, you know, just, just going to the nth degree, the nth degree. When, when you don't really need to. And um, so what we really just try to do is just get photos up, you know, let's take a nice photo of the item. Let's just get it up. There's good editing within all of the apps that I think keeps it relatively simple and we don't need to overcomplicate things. And um, yeah, that's how we've tried to do it. You know, like I know there's lots of even scheduling, to be honest, I don't even do scheduling. And the reason I don't is because because there's so much stuff coming in, the, the bias of what I want to put up might change depending on what we need to try, try and sell or what I think, you know, will be really interesting for people and we haven't had in a while. Um, so I kind of go on it day by day, um, really looking at what we're doing and then keeping that mixed and eclectic look. But it's, um, yeah, I think, look, I think as you get bigger, you know, having lots of tools and lots of scheduling tools and kind of going in that deeper dive. If it's somebody's job specifically, then it's definitely worth having them. But I think from, from me, I've anyway, I've just found just getting the photos done, keeping the process as lean as possible. Um, but fast, um, because that's, that's the business we're in. You know, we're not an antique shop that might have a piece that, you know, is worth 15 grand and you're happy for it to sit there for a long time. Um, you know, we have stuff coming in all the time. So with it, Architectural salvage yards are volume businesses. We do have high end items that you love having, uh, that it can be sitting there, you know, like some big feature pieces, like we've had confession boxes and life size horses made of buffalo bone and everything and anything you can imagine. We love having those in the yard. But if it's just another kind of display cabinet that's priced to move, just get it done quickly and don't bog yourself down. Yeah, fair enough. And is there any any way you go for new information or staying up to date with digital? Obviously, you've mentioned TikTok, which on this show is mentioned several times over, but a lot of businesses still don't do it. Is there anywhere yeah. where you go for new insights to try new things out? Where do you go? Yeah, well, yeah, definitely on the TikTok side, I can see why some people get turned off. You know, you kind of get a little bit of the the general uh, keyboard warriors out there as well. There's always there's always that to deal with, I think, more so than on the other platforms. But um, no, we've really worked hard on doing that on the video side and you can see the growth on TikTok. But no, I think for me, it's very much watching what's going on and following some of the bigger names like, you know, your Gary V's and your 
Alex Hormozis and stuff like that. You know, I'd be following them very closely because to be fair to them, they put a lot of information out um, and they have teams and teams behind them watching what's happening, watching what's trending, giving ideas. And at the end of the day, if I can pull a few of those ideas, I'm never going to be able to implement everything. Um, but if I can kind of watch what they're doing and getting ideas on it, then just try them. Um, sometimes they don't work for our type of business and sometimes they do. Um, but that's, yeah, kind of watching what others are doing. But there's nobody in, in my industry in particular, there's nobody really kind of going at it the way we have. It would be more often more traditional guys running the businesses and they don't, they're online, but they're not really online. Um, so it's nearly watching other sectors to get ideas. As, as I said, watch seeing your man doing the selling his watches, doing those searching out sal- searching um, challenges, getting that idea was just pure luck sitting on TikTok and scrolling, coming across it and kind of going, you know, let's let's have a piece of that and try it. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, no, that's exa- like a brilliant example, and such a good story as well. Um, is it something you can see yourselves doing regularly in the future as well? Or do you think? You've done it now. The, the searching challenges. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we are. We're to, to be every time I do one, I say, okay, I'm gonna be more consistent on doing these. You know, we've done three of them kind of over the last nine months or so. Um the aim was originally to be trying to do one a month, but it's like everything, things come up, it's just if anything, what I usually do is I'm kind of waiting for a good delivery for me to just jump in the van and it's like when the Galway one I did, I was like, I was actually up there uh, doing a big delivery and I was like, right, I'm going to just set aside two hours here and I'm going to go and do this. So it's it's trying to tie it in and maximize your day as well. There's only so many hours in, in everybody's day to, to do what you need to do. So no, I definitely want to do them more consistently because we're, we're trying to do even the lives a lot more now as well. Like we do, a, I've been doing them recently now on a Saturday morning, kind of 10 o'clock in the morning and uh, going on for about an hour. And just the last one that we did about two weeks ago, we nearly had 12,000 people on the live over the space of an hour. Now, some of those people are jumping in and out and scrolling and, you know, you know how flipping the TikTok in particular is people are just scrolling and just don't have the time. And um, But some people are coming on and staying on it for 10, 15 minutes. So that attention is, you know, if you were to compare it to what you would get for Google ads is worth hundreds and hundreds of euros from a, from a budget perspective. Yeah. That's so like what brilliant way of thinking of like presenting that and understanding that's how that data is worth. Um, so yeah, really good point, Harry. Um, and we're just, I'm just walking, I'm sorry on that. I'm just walking around the yard as well. You know, that's the, that's the beauty of that TikTok live. It's not me necessarily just sitting on the camera talking and saying things. It's actually walking around the yard and people writing in comments. Can you show me your post boxes? Oh, can you show me your pub signs? Can you, and then people are kind of, you know, it, it nearly becomes self-fulfilling. Then people get confident. Oh, somebody asked a question. Oh, I'll ask a question as well. It's okay to ask, can I see your doorbells or whatever it is? So it, uh, it becomes a bit of fun as well with it. So uh, people end up chatting away to themselves. And we're just part yeah, of it. And again, you just have such a wonderful business that there is that constant discovery on something like live where, you know, people are going around and going, oh God, that's good. That's good. Oh, I never really considered that. Um, but it does lead on to my next question, which is the digital industry as a whole. Is there anything you're looking at that you're thinking of applying in the future or anything that you find really interesting out there online? Yeah, like, look, obviously there's a huge amount around AI and everything that's going on there. And I've started to use it a bit in terms of getting ideas and trying to be a bit more efficient and coming up with, you know, just content creation can be tricky as well at times, you know, if you don't have a team of people to be bouncing off of it. So, and you can only watch so many videos of other people coming up with ideas. So using that a little bit, um, the biggest thing for us is just to keep improving the website um, and keep growing it. As you said, I'm glad, you know, somebody in your industry to appreciate that it's a, it's a good website. We've put a lot of work into it. Um, but again, at a relatively low budget and um, we haven't spent huge money on it, but it's just, consistently kind of been on it um yeah so i think kind of the biggest thing for us is just keep getting photos and keep getting nice interesting pieces up there and it sounds so simple but unfortunately that it's not it just takes a long time to do um but uh, yeah no so that's that's kind of where we are but look obviously ai has become a big thing and i'm starting to use it where i can um and in, in certain small ways but it's uh yeah and if you could recommend to small businesses listening today is there anything i know it depends on every industry and it depends on your audience and everything else but is there anything that you'd recommend that you've noticed especially socially because you could really 
think your story could influence good small businesses to adopt some of your strategies. But if yeah. you were recommending something that you'd say, okay, do this tomorrow, what would it be? Uh, just start getting your face on camera. It's it's worth yeah. everything. Like the amount of people who come into the yard now and just will walk up to me or to one of my brothers and just be like, oh, you're the lad who does the TikToks. Or they might not even see my face or they might hear my voice. Oh, I recognize your voice. Like as a business owner, that is huge for somebody walking into your business who it's their first time to ever walk in the door. Like you've already built up such brand loyalty there without having to really do anything, you know? And, and it's not that you're, the customer has been influenced hugely by, they just feel comfortable. Um, Cause they're like, no, no, I know that guy's face and I've watched him on a few videos. And like, we have so many people coming in and they're just like, oh, I've been following you for two years. I'm just delighted to get down. I've really enjoyed what you're doing. Um, and they're nearly just chatting to you as if they already know you because they're like, oh no, I've been, I've been looking at you for two years, you know, this type of thing. So that, that, that's huge. So I would just say to people, like if, if you have the fear of, putting your face on camera, just start doing a few and don't get bogged down, as I said earlier, about it having to be the perfect take or the perfect video because there's no such thing. You know, I've done videos and I'm in the middle of doing something and the lads turn on the forklifts or the teleporter and you start hearing the beep and going around in the back, back the other side of the yard. I still just put that video up because that's that's where we are, you know, and that's, that's just part of the environment. Um, just like there's other videos I put up, like we're very lucky. We have a very big yard. It's like a, a six acre site in an old woolen mills. And like, literally, if you're down there, all you're hearing is the birds going in all the trees around us. There's some people who would want to try and start editing that out. I don't because more often than not, the amount of comments I get, people go, God, look, I can just hear the birds in the background. You know, you never know what's going to kickstart a, a picture or an image or a video that you put on um, and kind of get a bit of commentary going on it, which is at the end of the day, what you're looking for, it's impressions and and getting that, that algorithm working. So I would just tell people, just get your face on at the camera and don't worry about it being perfect. It'll get better over time as you progress and you get better at doing the videos and you don't fumble around on your words and everything, which is, it happens to everybody. I'm sure it happens the best of the best, you know, and they do retake them because it's, they have to because they're at the top of the game, but just, uh, yeah, just kind of do it really. Yeah, I love it. That's definitely Gary Vee inspired as well. Just get on camera, say some motivational stuff and say your truth. And I think that's the thing that resonated with me with your content is it's so real. It's so, you can feel it's it's a family one run business. You can feel the warmth of the business through through the whole, um, through the campaigns and stuff you do. So kudos to you because I, I was impressed anyway, Harry. Um, and lastly, I'm going to have to, ask you the last question I asked you on the show, which is if you could bottle up one personality trait you have yourself, Harry, that you could pass on to others, what would it be? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of them that are <laughs> important that you'd want people. I think taking a, if you're running a small business, you know, big business or if people are within companies is different, but I think if you're running a small business, it taking a long-term view, is is everything um as i mentioned earlier i worked in i was a stockbroker for nearly 10 years before i uh, you turned into this so and i'd be a big warren buffett fan and you know the whole concept of compounding and just letting time do a lot of the work for you is huge you know at the end of the day if you've started running your own business you have to be willing to kind of go i'm going to do this for the next 20, 30, 40, however many years it is. If you start younger, even better for you. You have longer for that machine to work. But I, I think it's definitely take the long-term view and and be, you know, have conviction about what you're what you're going for. Yeah, plans will change. And that doesn't mean your conviction changes, but you know, you have to be flexible when you run your own business. But if you're taking a long-term view on it, there'll be plenty of opportunities. And you can get a lot done if you start thinking in five years and 10 year periods versus next month, I have to do this or this week, this has to happen. Things will get done. Obviously you have to have a plan week to week because you'll be in trouble otherwise. Um, yeah. But at the same time, if you're taking that long-term view, you will get those jobs done and you won't get bogged down by thinking, God, we just had a bad month. It's like, yeah, but the next two or three months might be far better and it'll balance it out. And the next, what's the next year or two years to come uh, to do? You can you can do a lot if you take that take that longer term view, but it, it it's not always the easy thing because I think the world we're in now has just got so fast paced and back to the TikTok reference, it's 
20 seconds, 10 seconds sound bites. That's what everybody's living by at the moment. Um, so don't get bogged down in that and take that long term view. Brilliant, brilliant answer. Harry, if anyone wants to reach out to you or check you guys out, how can they find you? Yeah, so the website is eurosalve.com. That's a good starting place just to have, but social media. So Kilkenny Architectural Salvage on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Pinterest, LinkedIn. We do all of them. Twitter, we post on them every day. Um, just start following us on one or all of them. And uh, yeah, and then pop down to the yard, you know, like for all we do and everything that's Digital is the way forward, but at the end of the day, you can't you can't beat walking around a salvage yard for an hour and just you never know what you're going to see. Yeah, that's it. And yeah, I hope people listening and watching these do. If you recognize Harry, say hi to him. And yeah, Harry, thanks so much for being on the show. Thanks everyone for listening and watching and everything else.